Hello and welcome to the Code Dose. My name is Urvashi and I've spent around six years in school learning how to code. Even though it has been three years since I've graduated with my computer science degree, I'm still continuously learning something new every single day about programming. But if you are someone who's still in the early years of your career, then here are seven mistakes, some of which that I've made myself or have seen beginners around me make and hopefully help at least some of you avoid them in your own journeys. So let's begin with mistake number one, where you are stuck with finding the best programming language. This is a mistake that a lot of people make even before they start learning to code. They get stuck on the stage where they're trying to look for the perfect programming language. The truth is there is no perfect or best programming language. What may be popular today may not be popular tomorrow. Every programming language has a different set of strengths that make them the best choice for a particular use case. When you're thinking about learning to code and getting into the industry as quickly as possible, the best thing to do is to look for highly in-demand programming languages. According to Stack Overflow's developer survey in 2023, here are a few programming languages that seem to be popular among professional developers. So JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, Java, C, C++, Go, and so on. You can pick any from the top 10 list and you'll be good to go. If you're still confused, then there's a wealth of information available out there that will help you pick the best programming language according to your own personal goals or preferences. The goal at this point should be to master the programming basics and not to fixate on the syntax. This is because even if you start with X programming language today, tomorrow you might be required to work with something else depending on the requirement of the project. If your fundamentals and basics are strong, picking your second, third and fourth programming language becomes very easy. I've already given you a few options here. You can pick any one programming language and just get started with it. Mistake number two is obsessing over certificates. The purpose of you doing a course is not to get a certificate by the end of it. The goal of doing a course is for you to learn a new skill. A certificate alone does not guarantee how much you know or how much you don't know. So even if you completed a course from A to Z and didn't pay attention to any of it, the certificate at the end has no value to it. Potential employers are not looking for someone who has the maximum number of certificates, but rather someone who has the skills. The goal should be to acquire new skills and sharpen them with the help of practical applications. While there are certifications that hold a lot of value and prestige, but those certifications are often accompanied with a formal test that you need to study for and pass in order to get that certificate. Now let's move on to mistake number three. You're not building things yourself. When someone tells you to build projects, what they're trying to say is to build something on your own. Building projects doesn't mean that you open up a new YouTube tutorial, copied and pasted the project and called it a day. Imagine this, when you first learn how to drive a car, there's usually someone who already knows how to drive and they accompany you on your first few rides. But you don't truly get comfortable with the idea of driving until you keep practicing it every single day till you reach a day where you don't need anyone to accompany you. It's the same with learning to code. Initially, you'll need someone to tell you how to do those things, but eventually your goal should be to be able to do them yourself. Making mistakes while driving is something that might lead to higher consequences, whereas making mistakes in coding does not really have those consequences at all. You can make as many mistakes as you want while learning to code, in the long run, this is what builds experience. Mistake number four is learning only for interviewing. While interviewing is a skill in itself, your core technical skills should not be capped till what is asked in interviews. Trying to become a better programmer is what should be your priority instead of trying to become the best at interviewing. Interviews may be a short-term win, but your core technical expertise is the thing that is going to carry you forward throughout your long-term future. It's important to work harder as well as smarter. You don't need to sharpen your interviewing skills from time to time, but having strong te technical skills will make that process easier for you. Instead of memorizing the answers to commonly asked interview questions, understand those concepts well and practice them in code. Mistake number five is neglecting soft skills. No matter how good of a programmer you are, if you're not able to present yourself well to potential employers, you're not going to get the opportunities of your dream. There might be people who may not have as strong of a technical skill set as you, but if they are good at communicating the value that they provide for that particular company, and if you on the other hand are not able to communicate well with the potential employer or the recruiter about what your expertise is, what you've worked on, what your experience is, then definitely the person who's able to communicate well is going to be selected over you. 
Usually interviews also involve a culture fit round. Now again, communication becomes extremely important here. Not only communication, if you are a good team player and if you get along with your teammates well, with your seniors well, this helps in your career growth as well. Mistake number six is being dependent on frameworks or libraries. It's useful to have a niche or a particular framework or a library that you're experienced with. But if you are dependent on that particular framework or library, then that makes you an inflexible software engineer. In the beginning, I said that different use cases demand different programming languages. So if you move from tech stack A to tech stack B, this is where your core problem solving skills will help you. A good software engineer should be versatile and should be able to adapt adapt well to different projects and scenarios. And lastly, mistake number seven is depending on one single resource for all your learning requirements. You might have a favorite trainer and you might enjoy watching their content more than someone else's. But if you're going to be dependent on that particular person to teach you everything, then you're going to be missing out on a lot. It's important to utilize different resources by learning because what resource A might miss out on explaining, resource B might help you fill those gaps in. Learn from different resources like the documentation, books, blog posts or videos to form a more complete understanding on your concepts. And again, make sure to test your learnings with the help of practical projects. Well, these are the seven mistakes that often new programmers make. Let me know if I missed out on something and I'll see you in the next video.